Good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Carrie, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator, here for another Saturday sip. So um, I must confess that today's Saturday sip was going to be a make-along. And if you have the make-along um, information, um, I will show it to you. It was supposed to be this Thursday, but it's just a long story. I did not get to do it. So here is what you are going to need if you want to do this later, like rewatch this feed, um, you're going to need some designer series paper, um, four by five and a quarter and one by 10 inch. Now I changed this right here, this base color to some, also some designer series paper at 11 inches by five and a quarter. So that's wrong. That should say five and a quarter, but, um, I don't have a pen handy. So, all of this isn't perfect. So you know what? I'm not even going to, we're not even going to go there. <laughs> so never mind. Um, but anyway, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to be using the playful plants and the, um, the, the perfect plants dies for this stamp. Although I've already die cut everything. So you guys don't have to wait for me to do that. Um, this is this is absolutely a big favorite right now. A lot of people are loving, loving, loving this bundle. And in fact, the whole suite with the designer series paper and some other um, items. I'm going to be using cinnamon cider ink, early espresso ink, and evening evergreen ink. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is the old style pad. This is the new style pad. The inks are still fine. So if you have the old ones, you're good. Reinkers will work. You're good. Unless they're super old. There were some where they were like, we upgraded these previously also. So, okay, so that's where we are. So, um, I have all of the pieces. This one is five and a quarter by 11. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. Uh, let's see if I can see all my pieces to see what I'm doing. Um, I also, this piece of designer series paper is one inch by 10. Now I think I've trimmed mine down a little bit more. Uh, maybe not. Nope, I didn't. Um, and I purposely cut this one out because I want to use the pots as um, what I'm going to do with it. So there's that one. And then this one's optional. Um, this one is, let me see, this one is three and three quarters by five. Okay, so that's an optional piece that I'm going to add to this card just because I think it needs it. And then um, some uh, basic white in two and a half by three and a quarter and then um, three by four and a quarter. I think that's right. Yep, okay. And then um, a coordinating piece of cardstock, probably the same color as this piece. And this one is, um, I believe it is three by four and a quarter. So we are good there. And um, and then of course, adhesives, dimensionals, your snips, that kind of stuff. That's everything you're going to need. So I'm gonna set this aside because I've already pulled out the stamps that I need from here. I'm gonna be using this pretty little pot, this group of flowers and to a dear friend. Those are the things I'm using, but it's absolutely interchangeable. Um, you will also see in the piece that I've already pre-cut, um, I have cut things out of the, let's see, I did stamp the pot, but I cut this flower shape out of the designer series paper. So you'll see that in just a minute. All right, so now here is how we do it. This piece, the four and a quarter by five and a half is actually your card base. Normally, you know, you think of folding it over, but this is gonna be your base. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of five and a quarter by 10. Is that right? Yep. Five and a quarter by 11. Sorry, I took off an inch. And I'm going to do some scoring with it. So, oops, that's noisy. So you're also going to need, I forgot, a ruler and a pencil. So grab those. So the first thing you're going to do before you score is you want to find the center. So this is five and a quarter. So your center is, go. this is the way I do the math. It's totally up to you how you do it. I always think five inches is two and a half, and then it's a quarter, so it would be right there at 
um, two and three eighths would be five and a quarter. I'm sorry, two and five eighths. So I'm just going to make a little pencil mark there. And I'm making it a little dark for you guys. It should erase fine for me, but um, you might want to make yours a little lighter when you're doing it. So again, two and a half and two and five eighths is going to be it. And the reason is we are going to trim from there. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to score at, I didn't write that down. So let me measure that. Hold on, hold on. I have my sample that I don't want you guys to see yet. So let me make sure I know what I'm talking about. We are going to score at three and a half, I believe. Yep. So we are going to score this at three and a half from both of the sides. So. I make sure my math is right. So that would be seven plus 11, four inches. Yep. Okay. So um, go to three and a half and score your paper and then flip it over. You can pull the arm out and do the math that way, but it's just easier for me, I think, to just flip it over. So if you're watching, tell me hello. Tell me where you're from. Um, is this your first time or are you a long time watcher of my videos? Um, also, just as a quick reminder while I'm putzing with my advertising, um, this is my Stampin' Up! website, memoryinkers.com. My email, memoryinkers at att. If you're watching this on someone's shared post, um, I'm at facebook.com forward slash memoryinkers. Memoryinkers is also my YouTube channel where I don't do any lives, but I do upload my videos in case you like to watch them on your TV in a bigger format. Um, and if you're shopping, I do have a monthly hostess code. The one that's going to be ending next week is this one right here, PCP34H2C, if you would like to place an order. And the designer series paper is on sale right now, most of it, and almost, I mean, quite a bit of it. Um, and this particular batch of um, designer series paper is on sale also. So now, I am going to fold these. Now, generally, I would tell you, um, I made my score line so the valley is here and the, the hill is on this side. Normally, you should fold into the hill, but let me think for a minute. I am doing it this way because I want, um, I want this paper on the outside, okay? So I'm scoring that so that I can see it when I do my trimming because now if you want to, you can take a little um, a pencil mark and mark where your, um, your little scores are so that you can see them. These are going to be kind of difficult with my aged eyes <laughs> to see because the pencil mark looks very much like all this other marking in here. But I kind of want to see where that's at. So now, um, so on both sides, you have three pencil marks at the score mark, both sides, and then right in the center. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take that score mark and you're going to line it up with the cutting edge. And then you're going to find the other score mark and turn it till it's at the cutting edge. And it usually wiggles, so you kind of have to watch what you're doing. And then you're going to cut that off. And then you're going to do it the other way. Where's my, where is my score? There it is. Okay. And you're going to go the other way. So you end up with a point. And then you're going to want to go in, and if you have any um, pencil marks, go ahead and get those erased real quick. If I don't do it now, I will forget to do it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And then you're just going to repeat that on the other side. Find your score lines and line them up again with the track mark in your cutter. This is where, you know, I don't particularly care for perfection, but this is one of those areas where it's probably a good idea to, to, to attempt perfection. 
See, now I can see that one's... Oh, no, it's okay. Um, and then we're going to go back the other way. But yeah, you, you kind of want this to be um, fairly... You want to be fairly particular with, with this cutting. And then I am done with my cutting tool. Again, I have to erase these so I don't forget... So if you decide that you're going to make this later and you want to follow along with me, that would be awesome. You'll let me know. So then the next trick is we're going to fold this over. You want to make sure that your leaves are going the way you want to. Okay, so this is up and down. This is the back side. But you wouldn't want to do it like this because then when you go like that, you're, you're like, see this plant here? I'm going to put it that way. It's growing down. You don't want that. So you want to make sure that you've got that correct. Then you're going to take your base piece, and I'm going to add adhesive to the back of this paper. And I am just going to maybe, oh my god, <laughs> I really need to clean mine. It's so, it's so, got so much adhesive on it that it sticks. But when you use it a lot, it just happens, you know. You want it to be sticky, just not not so. So again, check your direction of your flowers, and then you're going to just center this onto your base piece. So now you can see, here's my card, right? So then on the inside, I'm, I'm, this is where it's optional. You could just leave it like that. That's fine. And I'll show you on my other piece how I did something a little bit differently on my original one. Um, so now I, this piece is cut a little bit smaller. It's um, three and three quarters by five. And I'm going to just put that in the center just because I want it to. Now it's going to look a little different like this as opposed to this. So that's where you have to decide. Do you want, like, because this looks totally fine. And I could absolutely do my center piece there. But I just, I just wanted to do this. I don't know why. So, and I think it looks fine, personally. It's very jungly. I was going to say Jumanji, but I hope it doesn't come out to be a disaster <laughs> like Jumanji would. So that isn't good. So um, I also want to uh, remind you that if you share this video on your personal page or wherever you choose to share it, to please comment below that you shared so you can be in a drawing for some free stuff. I do a drawing every month for everybody who has shared. So um, just remember to do that. Now I gotta figure out which piece I want. Um, that piece, okay. So I am going to take this piece and I'm going to, this is gonna be on the inside, okay? It's gonna be like that. So I am going to stamp on that just a little bit, not, not anything uber fancy. I just want to put something down in the corner. So for that, I am going to use the Cinnamon Cider ink pad. It's one of our in colors. This particular in color will be going away at the end of May. So if you've not heard this from me before, I always suggest when you buy an ink pad to buy the reinker. Any ink pad, anytime. You'll have it. You won't have to worry about it. But most importantly, with in colors, because they do go away. And if you have ordered cinnamon cider, um, seriously, they start the ink. They don't. They, after a while, they stop making their inkers because the ink is going to go away, right? So for the in colors, there's a limited supply. So if you have any of the current in colors and you have not bought the reinker, now's the time. Uh, now or next month during celebration. But it's the good time to make sure you've got all of those. Okay, so now I'm using the little pot from the um, stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that right there on the bottom. That came out a lot darker than it did originally. I don't know why. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to stamp off. So I flipped it over because we sell double-sided cardstock. And I'm going to stamp it again. Okay. Now that's pretty light, but that's okay because it could be like one of those um, clay pots that's really light. And I don't know why, because I confirmed that this was the right color literally like 30 minutes ago. And uh, in fact, I'll show you. Look, look at that. That was what I just, and it's the same stinking paper. <laughs> it's like, 
I don't know. So anyway, that's where we are. Then I'm going to take the um, Evening Evergreen and I'm going to do the um, little hanging over flowers and they're gonna go just right over, right over the pot. Now, here's a little tip for you. That looks really cute, but you could huff on it and just re-angle this a little bit and lift it up just a slight bit and you're gonna fill it, you're gonna fill your little basket a little bit more. So that's just a little fun tip for you. Okay. So let me put that away for now. Look at that. I can't I can't play without inking my fingers. I don't know if you guys are like that, but if I don't try to get that off, ugh, it went under my nail. So, oh well. Um, if you've watched my videos, you have seen marks all over my hands all the time anyway from my, my inking. Hey, you know, that's the way it works. So now I'm going to just put some adhesive on the back of this. I think what I did was I super inked that when I was doing the video. I stamped it a little extra hard or something. I don't know. And I'm going to center this on here. Now centering this on here is kind of important because I want it to be hidden when I do my card. And you can see right now it isn't hidden. But I am going to make something with this. And what I did was I pre-made this so you guys wouldn't have to keep watching me stamp, but um, I did this and I stamped to a dear friend that was done in early espresso. And as I stated, I stamped this pot right here, this one. And I don't think, I think this is from, yeah. Um, you could stamp this because it's gonna, it's gonna pretty much make this whole design and you can cut it out but I cut this particular one out of the designer series paper because there are things in the designer series paper that will match with the dies while the designer series paper is available. So if you really like it, like I said, the paper is on sale if you want to stock up on this. Um, and, and the dies are, um, where did I put them? Oh, here they are. There's, there's a lot. The die um, actually will cut out this little macrame piece right here. Um, there's another piece that is kind of a shorter macrame. It cuts out a bunch of the flowers and the pots and all kinds of stuff. So I guess it's really leaves, not really flowers. But um, so this is a really good bundle. And um, if you have been looking at stuff online, you know this is really popular. And then I just have a little, um, a little bit of twine up there in a neutral color to um, look like it's, you know, tied on. Okay, so now I am going to put some adhesive on the back of this. Now this is kind of, um, it's got a little bit of lump to it. And that is because I actually, I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. The planter is on dimensionals and I kind of curled it on my fingers to try and give it that, that rounded look. Then I'm going to center this on here. I also, you can probably see that um, I took the time to weave the plants in and out of this. You've got to be careful, you know, take your time. And I think I snipped it right here, I think, is where I, I made a little snip so that that one could go through um, for the card front. Now, you would think that I was just going to put that on there, but no, I'm not. Remember, there is this piece of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and I am going to fold it around like so. So it kind of looks like that. Oh, interesting. I may center that a little bit more so that those pots are a little more similar, symmetrical. So you kind of want to play with it a little bit. And, um, and that is a good thing. So let me see what happens when I move that over. What happens to this pot? Okay, that looks a little more symmetrical, right? 
And you don't want to pull this super tight. So you want to give it some, some breathing room. And then I'm going to put some adhesive right here on this edge of it. I'm being very brave doing it while it's on my card. Oh my golly, why? Why on videos do I always have this issue? Okay, and then I'm just going to close it over. All right, see now this becomes a belly band and it slides on and off. And then this piece I'm going to just adhere on here. So if I look at where it goes, it goes between those two pots. So I know if I go handle the handle, I'm going to be okay with adhesive because it stopped short of that. And that's all I'm doing is putting that there. And then I want to make sure this this piece covers this. So I think that's pretty centered. And there you go. There is my card. And then when your friends get it, you can also, because I have this thing about belly bands. I think they're really cute. But if you send this to somebody who doesn't know about belly bands, they're going to rip it open. So you actually could adhere your belly band down and then just make this a flap, you know, like glue the pieces to the cardstock. And so it opens more like a card um, for people who will rip your belly band to get into the card. <laughs> So you slide the belly band off and then you've got this fun card idea on the inside. So let me show you my original one. Now I will tell you that this one's um, designer series paper is not on sale. In fact, it was on back order for quite a while. And so we're all really thrilled to have it back. So this is my original one. It's done basically the same way. I use designer series paper here. On this one, the um, paper on the inside was so beautiful that I did not have to cover it. And then this, I just, th uh, this paper is so gorgeous. Anyway, so that is my original card. So um, I like them both equally as well. I think this one has a little bit more wow factor to it. I don't know, maybe. I think they're both pretty cool. So which one do you like better, the pink or the dark green? Let me know. I would love to hear about that. Um, also, as a reminder, bingo is coming up on um, August 5th. That's in about a week and a half. Um, I will show you. You still have time to order the kit. Um, I don't know if the kits will get to you in time on bingo, but I will email you your bingo numbers. And you can always rewatch the bingo video to um, make the kits. But um, because that week, that whole first week of August, I'm going to be doing another one of my big parties. The spinny wheel is going to come back and there'll be a lot of videos that week. So if you don't follow me yet on Facebook, Memory Inkers, please, please do. Um, because we're going to have a lot of fun that week. Um, I will be exhausted, but um, it's still so much fun to have a big party week. So let me show you the items that you will make in bingo. First of all, there will be this fun little purse. You're going to get all of the pieces, including this piece of Velcro, to make this little purse. And the purse can go in either direction. If you prefer it out like that, you can, um, you can do that. And you don't have to put this on. You could actually leave it like that and fill it with a lot of treats because there's a lot of room in there. So um, there's the little purse and then four cards. So you've got this one. Now you're not going to get anything stamped, but you will get the pieces of the lipstick. Um, if you are interested in matchy, matchy stuff, this is from the, um, sorry, let me move that out of the way. This is from the Dress to Impress. Um, and then the matching dies, and the dies do have the purse in it. Um, there's more dies in there because the lipstick and the shoe, uh, the perfume bottle, um, those all get cut out. I'm trying to remember if the flowers do. Um, so that's what most of the cards are made from. As you can see, be as bold as your lipstick. Kindness is always in style is also from this stamp set. These flowers. But you can see how you don't have to do, I mean, you can do whatever you want with these card pieces. I just give you my ideas. Um, and then this last card, 
Oh, I just threw this one in there and I think I'm going to regret it because I've been cutting the kits for people who've already ordered and ay ay ay, it's a lot for me to cut out all these pieces, but that's what you get. And you can see this is the paper um, that we used today for this card. So, um, so those are what's coming in bingo. And then if you've never played bingo with me before, what you're also gonna get is five bingo numbers. Whoops, sorry. And then throughout the um, bingo game, I start pulling numbers and you've got your five. And as I pull, if, if I pull all five of your numbers during any of the games, um, because there's more than one, uh, then you will win a prize. And your um, the kit is $20 and that's for all of the things to, to make the cards and, and the little purse that I just showed you. Um, the bingo is free. You're really buying the card kit. Uh, because otherwise, if I made you pay for bingo, then it's gambling. And um, A, I don't want to do that. And B, I think it's illegal without a gambling license. I don't know. But anyway, um, so that's what we're going to do. And you, the prizes are always valued of at least $20. So um, if you win, you get your money back. So that's kind of nice too. All right. So that is today's Saturday sip. I hope that you will follow me on Facebook. Give me some likes, some loves, because those really help me. Um, again, tell me who you are. Say hello, where you're from. Um, is it your first time or are you a longtime visitor? Um, and I hope you will come back on Tuesday when I do another video called Tiny Tip Tuesday. All right, everybody, have a lovely weekend. I hope your weather is good. We're expecting more rain in Michigan, but wow. See you later.